So I do have to put this disclaimer in. I am not an accountant or hold any kind of accounting designation. I'm just a poor real estate agent, okay? Um, all the information contained herein is meant for general information purposes only and in no way should be accepted or considered to be proper sound or expert accounting advice. I am not an expert accountant and I'm not an accountant at all. Please always have your clients check any financial information with their accountant or lawyer. So this is just for general information purposes only to try to give you guys an idea of what you should be looking for inside an income statement. So the net operating income in NOI is the short form for it. The NOI is one of the key statistics to help determine the value of a business. It's really straightforward. Without an NOI, it is really, really, well, I think it's virtually impossible to determine the value of a business, but we'll talk about a few things if there is no NOI to determine the value of a business. We'll talk about that as well. So what is an income statement? What is the NOI? An income statement is a snapshot of a period of time, usually one year of a business financial health or a lack thereof the business's financial health. Can it be less than one year? And the answer is yes. So for example, a business may have been operated for, you know, I don't know, years and years and years, and we can get last year's um, statement and the statements before that without any problem at all. However, somebody puts an offer in, in September, as an example, um, to purchase a business, they can ask for a half year financial statement. You know, they can ask for a half year income statement to see what, for example, from January to the end of June, that kind of thing, it, it's possible, but, but normally it's one year of business that is in a financial statement, but it is a snapshot of a period of time. NOI is important because it gives buyers an idea of what the business might be worth. A bank will want to see a few years of NOI before lending a buyer any money. All right. If the NOI um, uh, shows zero income, well, guess what? No bank's going to lend. All right. And that comes into cash businesses and some of the problems that cash businesses uh, end up um, uh, having when they want to sell their business, but banks won't lend unless they can see that the NOI is going to be able to cover the loan that the bank is lending to a particular buyer, okay? So if you have a buyer and the NOI is really, really poor and from the seller side and the buyer says, well, I need a mortgage. Well, you, you may as well stop the conversation um, if you have a buyer that needs to get money borrowed, um, then most banks won't lend. Now, some there are lenders that lend for just about anything that you want to buy, but the interest rate goes through the roof, right? Um, you know, can, can you get a commercial loan today for just about anything at 15, 16, 17% interest? Yes. Does a buyer want to pay 16, 17% interest? The answer is no. And so not usually anyways, um, it would be very unusual. So you do want to make sure that when you are talking to your buyer and he says, well, I want to buy a, a, a restaurant business, which is a great example after COVID that most restaurant is poor uh, for some non-existent that no bank's going to lend. And so you want to have a good conversation with your buyer about their financial health, okay? So revenue, we're gonna go through a bunch of different terms. And the reason why we're gonna go through a bunch of different terms is, is what happens particularly on a seller side is you're talking to a seller. A seller wants to sell their business and you ask the seller, well, you know, how much money does this make, okay? Uh, how much money does this business make? And the seller says, oh, it makes $300,000 a year. Well, what is that? Is that, is that before tax? Is that after tax? Is it the net operating income? Is it revenue? 
what is that number that a particular seller will tell you? And you have to be able to drill down to try to figure out what number it is. Let's face it, if it's a little mom and pop shop um, in a plaza somewhere, a uh, restaurant again, and they say the revenue is $400,000 a year, you can probably guarantee that that is not the net operating income, okay? A net operating income of $400,000 a year would be a very successful business in today's world, particularly for a restaurant. Um, so you do want to make sure that you understand and you ask the right questions when you're talking to a seller. So, you know, what is the net operating income is the question you should ask. But what the seller tells you is something could be something really different. He hears income or she, he or she hears income in their head and they go 400,000. Well, is that really the net operating income or is that the revenue? Revenue equals sales. Revenue equals sales. Sell a Coke for a dollar means that your revenue is a dollar. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is usually the first figure that a seller will blurt out at you is the revenue. They're not talking about net operating income yet. They're talking about how much gross money they have taken in. Okay. And then of course there's costs of goods sold, what you have paid for the goods sold. So how much have you paid for a Coke? Gross profit is the profit that a business makes by adding up all the revenue and subtracting the cost of goods sold. So gross profit is the next one. So what is profit minus cost of goods sold? And sometimes the seller is going to tell you the gross profit. Okay, they're not going to tell you what the revenue is. They're just going to say, oh, I made $200,000 last year. Well, what is that? Is that revenue? Is that gross profit? Or is that net operating income? You just can't take what a seller blurts out of their mouth and assume that that is the net operating income. You have to know these terms to be able to talk to a seller to determine what they are talking about. So net operating income. So we have revenue, gross profit, net operating income. Net operating income is the gross profit produced by the business, less all other expenses. Rent, heat, insurance, repairs, legal fees, property taxes, salaries, cleaning, Oh my goodness, it could be, you know, phone bills, um, pencils. Uh, what has the uh, owner of the company spent from their gross profit? So not oper net operating income, excuse me, NOI equals gross profit minus all other operating expenses. You need to know what you are talking about when the seller is giving you the numbers. What is the real number? And the easiest way to get this is ask for a copy of their financial statements. The financial statements will have an income statement and it'll show you the net operating income. Income statements, I'm sorry, financial statements will also have a balance sheet. It'll have a few other things in there as well. Uh, but in general, it's going to have a balance sheet and net operating income. You don't really need to see the balance sheet. That's not really your business. But the net operating income is your business. And if you're on the buyer side, you want to see the net operating income. You don't need to really know what the gross profit is. You don't really need to know what the revenue is. You need to know what the net operating income is from both sides to determine whether you're on the buyer or the seller side to determine what the value of a business is. Any questions so far? Okay. So taxable income. Some sellers are gonna give you what the taxable income is. Taxable income is the net operating income less depreciation and interest expense. 
Okay. So taxable income is uh, depreciation. And depreciation is the method used to value assets in the business that are getting older. Depreciation amounts are set by the government. In Ontario, very generally, the depreciation rate for a building is 4% for equipment, appliances, furniture, machine, machinery, outdoor advertising signs, et cetera, it is 20%. So what is depreciation? I have a business and I ran a business, I use my own example. I ran a laundry business for years and years and years. I had a, a laundromat business. And it had, um, I think it was uh, uh, 16 washers and 16 dryers, um, plus a soap machine, all sorts of little things like that. There was a Coke machine in there. And I was allowed to depreciate that equipment at 20% per year. Why does the government let you do that? So the government lets you depreciate your equipment. And so if I had a washing machine that was worth $1,000, I could depreciate it by $200 and I could take that depreciation and reduce my net operating income to come up with a taxable income. And they did that as, I don't want to say as a reward, but as a financial incentive to keep your equipment going so that you get a smaller taxable income. And so you can reduce you can reduce the, the, the net operating income by um, taxable income, by depreciation, I should say. And mm -hmm. people do do this kind of thing. And it does make a difference when it comes to selling a property, what the seller has depreciated the assets. And we talk about that in two weeks from now when we talk about the difference between a share sale and an asset sale. So you don't want to know taxable income. Okay. You want to go and net operating income. So what we've done is we've come down the, from the top going down, we've got the revenue, we've got your cost of goods sold, it comes up with your gross profit. Your gross profit is uh, your net operating income is your gross profit minus all operating expenses. And then going down further, you get taxable income. You wanna make sure that you, you're not dealing with taxable income. Okay, depreciation expense. So here's an example of class one, a 4% that you're allowed to do for your building is electrical wiring, lighting fixtures, plumbing, sprinkler systems. You can see by this that if you're doing your machinery and your building um, uh, and you're depreciating, that you are really depreciating and reducing your net operating income. So if you're looking at a taxable income, um, uh, then it's not the real operating income of the property and you can't use this. Interest expense. An interest expense is the amount of interest paid on qualifying interest payments that are tax deductions. So some um, uh, net operating incomes uh, have interest expenses built into the income statement and an in interest expense, for example, can be you buy a building, you have a mortgage, a commercial building, you have a mortgage on that building, you can deduct the interest from your mortgage to reduce your taxable income, okay? So once again, your taxable income is dropping lower and lower from your net operating income. So you really wanna make sure that you understand that your interest expense and depreciation when it comes statement that you do not really need to include it. And we're gonna look at a few examples about this. Any questions about depreciation or interest expense? Okay. So here's an example, your gross profit. Your gross profit, if in this example, your revenue is $100,000, your cost of goods sold is 90,000. So as an example, you had $100,000 worth of Coca-Cola that has been sold, but it cost you $90,000 to buy the Coke from Coca-Cola, your gross profit is $10,000, okay? Your net operating income, 
is your gross profit minus everything that you need to make your business run. So utilities, and I just made these numbers up, right? Your utilities, marketing, property tax, management, salary, other salary, in some income statements are pages of net operating income. The expenses are, there's pages of it. You know, could, like I said, it could be phone, it could be office expenses, it could be uh, new furniture, it could be all sorts of things that come up in a day-to-day -day running a business. So your NOI is a dollar in this example. In going forward, your taxable income, your NOI is a dollar, depreciation is 50 cents, interest is 49 cents, your taxable income is one cent. So you can see in these, this snapshot of how to calculate net operating income, that when you are talking to a seller in particular, what number are they telling you? Are they telling you revenue? Are they telling you gross profit? Are they telling you net operating income? Or are they telling you taxable income? And it's so important that you get a handle on this. I have had many agents come to me and say, John, the, the, the business is unbelievable. It does hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Well, what number is that? I've asked the agent flat out, well, what is that? And then they go back to the seller and it turns out that that's their revenue, okay? You have to be really careful. I've had it the other way where the income is really poor and you look at it and you go, geez, this just doesn't make sense at all. Let's look at the net operating income. Um, I'm sorry, let's look at the income statement. And it turns out that the seller has told you that it's taxable income. So you have to make sure that you're getting the right number from the seller. It's really important for a buyer that you have the right number. NOI, dollar income. So here we have a bunch of different examples, okay? One, our gross profit is 10,000. Utilities are 5,000, marketing, property tax, management, salary, other salary, and the NOI is $1, okay? Two, I'm gonna break it down for you here again, 49 cents and 50 cents, your NOI is one cent, okay? And three, what happens a lot of the time is that the net operating income does not include a management salary. All right. And you have to be aware when the management salary is not included. So sometimes, particularly in small businesses, the management salary is not included because it can be done as a share dividend to the, to the owners of the company. But the owners of the company are sitting there running the business. Um, 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week. They've got a few helpers. So the other salary is $999, okay? The management salary is in the balance sheet and they've taken it out of here because it's it, because of a shared dividend that a manager can take out of their balance sheet. And I don't have to get into how or why the advantages of doing that are, but if you if you are representing a buyer and there is an income statement without a management salary, you need to find out if the owners are running the business. Because if the owners are running the business, how are they getting paid? And if there's no management salary in there, you need to put the management salary back in, just like in step one here where the management salary is here. This one, step two, is not correct because you've also got your interest and depreciation, which is making this a taxable income. Whereas here, you're not having the management salary. Your NOI looks great, but if the buyer is going to be buying this property, or sorry, this business, if the buyer is gonna be buying this business, he needs to pay himself. How is he going to pay himself here? It either comes out of the income statement or it comes out of the balance sheet. But either way, in this example, the management's out a thousand bucks. 
right? The management has to be paid $1,000. Somehow it doesn't appear out of thin air, all right? So you want to make sure that these three items, and often they are in the income statement, management salary, or not in, in this case, and sometimes these are in it as well. The accountant that is making the income statement has the flexibility to put these things in or not. They can put them in other areas in the financial statements. And so you want to make sure that you understand when you look at an income statement, what is what are you actually looking at? Sometimes the NOI says a dollar. Sometimes the NOI says one cent. Sometimes the NOI says a thousand. Which one is correct? The correct is this one here. Number one is the correct one. It does not have interest or depreciation in it. It has the thousand dollar management salary in it. This is the correct one, okay? Does anybody have any questions about this? Well, letting me off easy. So make the income statement real. So you get as a buyer or a seller, okay? You get an income statement that shows the NOI as being one cent, okay? You want to show to a buyer in particular that in your case, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, the interest and depreciation that is in here is not gonna count for you because this is getting down to taxable income for the seller. Your NOI is actually one dollar. Okay, so you want this in this case here, you're improving the NOI. It's making it better for the buyer. Okay, because the interest that the buyer might have to pay might only be twenty cents. Who knows? The depreciation might be seventy cents. Who knows what what setup the buyer is going to do, right? when they own the business after they've talked to their accountant, what is the buyer going to do to um, make his taxable income less? This interest and depreciation is only relevant to the seller. It is not relevant to the buyer, okay? If the, as an example, if the seller purchased the property for $100,000 and borrowed money, and he's writing off 49 cents, perhaps what is happening here is that the buyer is buying it for $200,000 and his interest expense is going to be 98 cents, right? Which would reduce the buyer's taxable income, but it does not change what the real net operating income is, okay? And this is up to the buyer to talk to their accountant or their lawyer if the lawyer knows this stuff, uh, most do, um, to determine what the real net operating income is. Make the income statement real, okay? For a seller, you can say, well, no, I think your business is worth more than one, one cent. The value is worth more than one cent. It's probably worth closer to a dollar, the net operating income, net operating income, which means that your business is worth more and you're gonna make a seller really happy, okay? When you do that. Make the income statement real, right? You, if you have a, um, if you have a no management salary situation, add the management salary into it to get your real net operating income. Once again, you want to make sure that if it's being run by somebody who is selling it, you have to have your management salary in there, or else how does the buyer know how much money this place is actually going to make? Okay. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Jennifer just brought me a cup of tea. Isn't that nice? And so that's always good. There are great ladies at the front here. Um, so you do want to make sure that you understand this. Okay. In all three examples, the net operating is $1. It's the correct one. Okay. You want to make sure that you understand when you're looking at a net operating income statement that 
you are looking at these couple of different points, the management salary, interest and depreciation, to come up with what the real net operating income is. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yes, John, uh, all of this information has to come from the seller. And we know most of the sellers doesn't want it to uh, disclose all of these documents, most of these documents, because these are kind of confidential. How we can find out if these documents are real? Uh, we have an accountant or we have to just guess? Right, great question. So you can ask for the financial statements. The financial statements will have a cover page and that cover page will tell who or what has done the financial statements. And hopefully, you know, it's done by a reputable firm. Freeland Caldwell Riley is a huge accounting company. Um, uh, Brookfield Partners has a whole accounting um, uh, statement, uh, or accounting um, department, I should say. You know, so you'd recognize a, a, a reputable accounting company. But sometimes you're absolutely right. You, you get something that's done by a bookkeeper and you have no idea of that bookkeeper. You know, the, all they're doing is following what the seller has told them, right? In that case, you can ask for their corporate tax return. Let's see what's actually on their corporate tax return. Okay, and that's common, okay? Um, you can ask for, and in many cases, in a sole proprietorship, mom and pop are running their restaurant. Um, they're not, they don't even have an income statement, but they have a T1 general income tax return. And in that, they can put down their business expenses and they can put down their gross revenue on what they've made and come up with how much tax they have to pay at the end. Now, that takes a little bit more work to, you know, kind of go through that. And a lot of people, to be honest with you, Farshid, don't even want to give you that, right? And so what happens then? And we'll talk about the cash business in just one moment here, okay? Uh, sorry, just, just let me check what slide I'm on here. Yeah, so we're just going to go back here again. So the question is, and, and we'll, we'll get back to that, Farshid, okay? So the question is now, how do you determine the value of a business when you know what the net operating income is? The million dollar question. And there's really two ways. One is capitalization rates. And we do a, an in-depth look at capitalization rates next week. The second is a return on your investment. So let me ask you, Farshid, since, since you obviously are doing this, so if you had an income statement that showed the NOI for real as a dollar, okay? Would you pay $100 for this business? No. No. Why? Because it would take you 100 years to get your money back, right? Right. Would you pay $10 for this business? Again, no. 10 no. years. 10 years to get your money back is pretty tough. The average thing is the average return really is five or six years. Four years is even better. Um, I'm sure some of you know the show Shark Tank. Um, Shark Tank is a, is an interesting show where investors uh, uh, line up in front of potential um, uh, people who want money to run their business, and they are always looking for a return in four years. But that's Shark Tank. They're sharks. Right. And so they're, they're pretty tough to get along with those guys. Most people are pretty happy with a five year return. And so quite simply, if you have a net operating income of, let's say, $50,000, are you happy to pay $250,000 for that business? And the answer is for a cash investor, maybe, you know, that they the business is good, but this is going to come now into capitalization rates. I'm just trying to tell you the, you know, the rough rule of thumb is that most people want to get a business that you're going to be able to pay back in five years. Now, it could very often be that it could be, as an example, uh, a, a young couple um, wanting to 
um, run whatever, a restaurant business. And they're really happy that the net operating income is fairly low, but geez, look at that management salary of a thousand bucks, right? And so, boy, if I made a thousand dollars a year, instead of working for somebody else, I can make my own income of $1,000 a year. Yeah, yeah, the net operating income is only a buck, but I'm making 1,000 bucks, right? And so that's not so bad. I'm, I, instead, of, instead of a job and getting a paycheck and all that kind of stuff, I can do this as well. And so even though the net operating income in this example is relatively low, the people who are running the business are really happy with the income that they are making. And that's often a way that a buyer will purchase the property, okay? So what unfortunately, what a bank will say is that, well, yeah, you're making $1,000 a year, congratulations, but how are you going to pay the mortgage when the net operating income is only a dollar? And that causes problems for the kind of a buyer if they have to borrow money. But it's often the bank of mom and dad that set up people um, for this kind of a thing. Um, you know, that, the, that the, the, the buyers are, you know, really good at what they do and mom and dad see it. They can't find a job. They buy a business and away they go. That's often the way this works. Or once again, unfortunately, they borrow money at a very high rate and take their chances. And that happens as well. Okay. Any questions about that? So what to watch for? Wages. Does the NOI, this is a bit of a synopsis, wages. Does the NOI include wages for the owner or management? And this may be the salary for the buyer. And we've talked about interest expense and depreciation expense. You have to make those calls when you're looking at an income statement for these three things, okay? Now, some income statements might have something really weird in them, some of them do. Um, but uh, in general, um, these are the most, these are the three that you really have to watch out for. For a buyer, you want to say to the net operating, I'm sorry, for the income statement, yeah, but we should take away the interest expenses and the depreciation expense, or you need to add in a management salary, okay, or take away a management salary because you're going to be weird with the business, who knows. But these are the three things that basically are flexible in an income statement, okay? So the cash business, what happens when, and this is often the case in the restaurant business in my world and when I owned a laundromat, cash business, lots of quarters. I can tell all of you I could roll quarters really fast. Um, no question. Um, the cash business. What do you do when somebody says there's a cash business? You know, a restaurant's a great example of a cash business. Easy to get cash from a, from a restaurant. A laundromat is another one. Um, a car wash company, another great cash business, okay? And so what are the advantages to the seller? You know, they're not claiming the cash. They're putting it in their pocket. They don't pay taxes on it. The seller disadvantage, it makes the income statement look bad. Oh yeah, I know the income statement shows I'm only making you know $4,000 a year, but I take in $25,000 a year in cash. Well, that's great, but uh, no bank is going to lend money because the income statement looks bad and no bank is going, they're gonna laugh at you. Yeah, but the seller tells me that they make $25,000 a year in cash. The bank doesn't care, okay? The bank is only going to do what's on paper. So what can you do about it? Um, one thing that you can do about a cash business is will the seller take a vendor take back mortgage, okay? Is the seller going to put his money where his mouth is? Yeah, I make $25,000 a year, but will the seller take, oh, bless you, Farshid, um, the, um, will the seller take, um, a, a mortgage back? Will they hold the loan? In other words, if they're willing to hold the loan, then they're proving that the cash is there to pay the loan off. Okay. 
Another thing that you might be able to do is in an agreement of purchase and sale for the business, the seller, I'm sorry, the buyer could possibly sit in the business for a few weeks as a condition to see how much cash is coming in. This has happened in, uh, it happens in hair salons and barber shops, as an example. The buyer disadvantage is the seller telling the truth. Hard to know. Buyer disadvantage can only borrow money based on the income statement. And so you do have to be careful when you're dealing with a cash business. Will the seller hold a vendor take back mortgage? That condition in the offer for a few weeks for the buyer to observe the business. We just had a sale just a, a few weeks ago of a hairdressing salon that the buyer did sit in the hairdressing salon for three weeks as a condition until they were satisfied that the money was there. There was another one just recently for a food salon, a food salon, a food business of some sort where the buyer sat there for a few weeks to see what kind of cash was coming in through the business. So it happens. The third choice is, will the seller be a guarantor for the loan? So the buyer goes to the bank. The bank laughs them out of the business, laughs them out of the bank because you know, the net operating income is lousy. Well, will the seller guarantee the loan? Will the seller put the money where the mouth is, where the cash is there? And guess what, Mr. Seller? If the cash business is not there, then guess what? You're responsible to pay the mortgage. You're the guarantor of the loan. And so these three ways can help solve the cash business problem. Any questions about that? The love factor, I love this one. Some buyers don't care about the NOI. They simply know that they can sell more special muffins. It's as simple as that. I've got the million dollar idea. I know how to make a muffin. I don't care what the NOI is. I know that I can turn this business around. Okay, the NOI stinks. They're asking 100,000 for it, I don't care. End of story. The love factor requires cash. Lenders do not lend for this kind of a purchase. A line of credit may help if the buyer's got a line of credit. I had an agent come to me a couple of years ago and said, you know, the buyer wants to buy the business, loves it. He had the special muffin idea and I talked him out of the business. And I said, why did you talk him out of the business? Well, the NOI was terrible. I said, you know what, you've made a mistake. If they want to buy the business, they have the financial means to buy the business, for goodness sake, let them buy the business. You are a salesperson after all. Uh, let's see, I have a question in the chat. Can you tell more about the guarantor for a loan, how the buyers could make the sellers pay their loan? Okay. Um, can you tell more about the guarantee for a loan, how buyers could make the sellers pay for the loan? Well, the, the buyers would have, the answer to that is, Annie, is that the um, buyers would have to say that they can't run the business anymore. And so the buyers can't run the business anymore because in this example, the cash is not coming in as the seller said that the cash is going to come in like, okay? So the buyer has gone to a bank and borrowed money. The seller has guaranteed the loan. In other words, the seller has said, yes, I will guarantee this loan so that if the buyer does not pay the loan, the seller has to pay it, okay? The cash doesn't come in. The buyer defaults on the loan. The seller is a guarantor and that's the end of it. The seller has to pay it. But in that case, Annie, the seller is also taking the business back as well. So the buyer, goes, the buyer goes bankrupt, the seller takes over and runs the business again, hopefully. Um, it's rare, it's, it's a rare thing that, um, that the, um, um, that a, a seller will guarantee a loan. It's rare, it happens, but it's rare. Um, 
uh, that they do it, just to let you know. It's the same way as in the residential side. Uh, son and his wife want to buy a house. Um, they don't quite have enough money and the parents guarantee the loan or the mortgage on the house. Same, same idea. Does that answer your question okay? Okay, you're welcome. So that was fast. I mean, it's not a uh, very, very deep subject to get into. Um, so what do you do with a proper income statement? How do you determine the value? So next week at the same time, Wednesday, March 9th, yeah, that's right, March 9th at 10 a.m., we take a dive into capitalization rates. Um, once again, uh, this will be uh, put onto our YouTube training channel and um, so that you can review it. But you really, the, the big mistake that people make is a seller says, I make $400,000 a year. And then they price it out of this world because the net income statement is just a tremendously lower amount. Okay. So you do want to make sure that you understand what an income statement contains. If you have any questions, if you get a net income statement and, and you don't understand it, for goodness sake, fire it off to me. I'm happy to try to explain it to you. Always, as I did with the disclaimer at the beginning, always, please, anything like this must go to the buyer's accountant, okay? To double check these numbers, make sure that they're real. Back to Farshid's question. Yeah, give those numbers to the accountant and see if they're real, you know, or the buyer for sure, just to double check it, okay? Uh, for all of the rest of you, or do you have any other questions? Next week's capitalization rates will be about the same length of time. It'll be an hour or less. And um, uh, does anybody have any further questions? Thank you very much, John. You're welcome, Farshid. And uh, thank you, Carrie and Hannah and whoever else is on board here. Thank you very much. I hope you found it helpful. And since there's no other questions, we'll um, call it a a morning. Good morning. Have a great day, everybody. All the best. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching. If you like our video, please hit the like button, the subscribe, and even the little bell to get notifications just so you can stay in touch and watch more of these great videos.